And today we're going to be preaching on the title, What Matters to You? And the reason why I started with, with this question as a title is because most of the time, we, if somebody asks me what matters to you, I'm going to start naming a whole list of things right off the bat, right? So as Christians and people of God, what matters to God should be the things that matter to us. I just remember how when I was dating my wife, which wasn't long, <laughs> Mary heard right away. Um, but when I was dating her and the first years of marriage, it's like I tried to see what mattered to her or what she liked or what she wanted to do. And I compromised a lot of what I wanted to do. I compromised a lot of the things that maybe were my preferences, a lot of the things that maybe I wanted. And I started to look into her, right? Because I loved her. And we need to understand that love is an actual choice. It might start with attraction, right? Physical attraction, um, emotional attraction, or even um, the way that person thinks, the way that, that, that person thinks. Um, something always attracts us to that person. And that is the initial thing. Just like we were attracted to God because of something something in particular. Maybe we were in a need. Maybe we were in the lowest point of our lives, but something attracted us to God, right? When he knocked and he said, I am the way, I am the life, I am here, I love you, something created that initial bond for us to say yes to him, for us to start our walk with him. And I want to emphasize on this because every initial relationship may happen because of things that they won't last, right? Let's be honest. Some of the things that we got to know people or when we fell in love, either it be the attraction, those things are going to fade. One day we're going to grow old. One day we won't be as good looking as we are. And all those things will fade and the relationship cannot be established or cannot, that, those things cannot be the foundation of the relationship. So if we're following God because of what we expect God to do for us, or if we have, expect God to give us things, or, or even um, something as simple as, I'm going to serve him so that I could just be saved, that is not going to be enough. Okay, What is going to be enough is the decision, the choice that we make continuously to follow him. The choice that we make continuously to get to know Him. The choice that we make continuously to renew our mindset. And that brings me to one of the verses that we're going to be utilizing today. We're going to be going through some Bible verses here. And it's Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing and perfect will. And I just love here because the word transformed that it uses here in the Greek, it comes from metamorphosis, right? And I know all of you can say uh, or think of a butterfly, right? That, that goes into a metamorphosis. And that is the renewal of the mind, the transformation that God wants us to have. A transformation where we can't go back and turn into a caterpillar where we can't go back and be the old self that we were before, but a transformation inward so deep that we will know, right, like it says here, what is good and what is pleasing and what is God's perfect will. And I think that's one of the things that we struggle with. We struggle with the fact of what is it that you want, Lord? What is it that you want, right? What matters to you? And it's okay to not even have an idea of what matters to God. It's okay because we all start a journey, a relationship, and we want to get to know that person. It's the same thing with God. God is inviting us to get to know Him, to renew our understanding, to not conform to the patterns of this world. And also in Ephesians, Paul also says, do not be like the Gentiles or don't go back to thinking like a Gentile. And all he's saying here is, don't go back to thinking the way you were thinking. So it's important for us 
to actually understand that God wants to transform us, God wants to change us, God wants to change our mentality, and the things that we held as priorities, the things, even the definitions of success, the definition of, of what matters should change, okay? And, and that brings me with another question that I even ask my, I even ask God in my journey, in my walk with Him, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll worry about your stuff, okay? Who's going to worry about me? Who's going to worry about my stuff, right? And the Bible and God is so beautiful that He answers all these things. In Matthew 6, he says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. God will provide what is necessary. And, and just to give that, that verse some context, we're going to jump back a couple of verses before. 6.25, and it reads, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And I think there's so many important key things here. The first one is, if God takes care of the, of the birds, and then it says there, are we not much more valuable than they are? So the first thing that Matthew is trying to establish here is the trust. Trusting that God will take care of what matters to you. Filter through, through what matters to Him. And let me explain that. Because at the end of the day, I am a father. And as a father, if I have a plate of food, and it, which has happened, I don't know if it has happened to you, but I have, I have some, some, maybe some, some chicken in my plate, and one of my sons, they finish eating their chicken faster than what I can eat mine. And sometimes they roam around. I don't know if this has happened to you. Maybe you have bought some chicken wings or some pizza or something, and they eat their food, and they're roaming around. They don't ask you for it. They're just looking. You know what they want. They want a piece of that chicken. They want some more, right? What do we usually do as parents? Sometimes we take the food of our, out of our own mouth and we give it to our, to our children. And the Word said, if we that are evil can show good deeds to our children, how much more our Father that is in heaven will give us what we ask? The thing is that when we go through this transformation that Romans 12, 2 is saying, see, we're not defining success. We're not defining needs. We're not defining um, any of these things with a distorted mindset. Because the way we used to think when we were back in the world was distorted. And, and a lot of that has to do with tradition. Tradition. A lot of it has to do with how we were shaped, formed. A lot of it has to do with, with our upbringing. And the reality is we have a lot of distorted definitions. And because we have a lot of distorted definitions, sometimes it's hard for us to even accept the things that God wants us to hold dear and near to us, that is dear and near to His heart. And, and, and the Word just continues to give us assurance. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. The first thing I want to establish is that if He cares for you, He will care for the things that, are hold, that you hold near in your heart. If He cares for you, He will take care of those things, right? Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. I mean, here it emphasizes, don't lean not on your own understanding. And we go back to Romans. Renew 
our understanding? How do we renew our understanding? How can we know what God's perfect will is? His good and perfect will for us. And it's through the scriptures. It's through Holy Spirit. That is the only way that we can renew our understanding and, and escape and be free from the patterns of this world. We have to be honest. The world is trying to shape us. It's trying to um, um, even guide the way we think, the way we spend money. And we need to be aware of these things and understand that we need to filter and think about, Lord, the things that matter to me, I, 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 want, I want those same things to be aligned with what matters to you. Even though the things that matter to you might not be things that I actually care about right now. Because the beautiful thing about God is that God doesn't ask us to do anything that is not good for us. See, a lot of times we see the commandments, the laws of God, and, and, and Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? And sometimes we see the commandments as burdens. We see the commandments are things of, 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 that even cause us some type of pain. That pain of, of dying to ourselves. But when we do that, we realize how good those commandments, how good those things are. And, and it's beautiful because there's a verse that says, taste and see how good God is. And it's not just talking about one part of God, God as a whole. So if, he's, if he is asking something from us, it's because it is good for us. So what matters to God and how those things should matter to us? There's a couple of things that matters to God. One of them, and the first one is to love him. God wants your love. He wants you to love him above anything else. See, and the thing about loving God is that love is not just something that we can just say, okay? It's something that needs to be backed up by actions. It needs to be backed up by deliberate decisions. And then he wants us to follow his rules, his commandments. And then he says, love others. And I could go down a list of other things that matters to God, but I think those are the three main things. Love God about everything else. Follow God's rule, His commandments. And then let's love each other. Love each other. Let's love on each other. And I think that's one of the important things that we are doing here in, 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 in applying Sabbath Sunday, implementing an environment and situations where people could come together, because at the end of the day, we cannot love from far. At least not the way that we should. Because when we are around people, yes, there is friction. Yes, there is disagreements. Yes, we might not see eye to eye on certain things. But all those things are secondary from the primary thing that what keeps us together is Jesus. That what keeps us together is the love that he has for us. That when we say yes to him, we became children of God. We, were no, we are no longer, ethnicity should not, should not separate us. Um, economic background should not separate us. Skin color should not separate us. None of those things matter anymore. We are one people now. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And the word is so clear. John 13, 35 says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This matters a lot to God, for us to love one another. And I just, I just have to give a shout out to PJ for being bold and taking the steps necessary in order to create environments so that we could come together, sit in the living room, 
and discuss things like this, talk about things like this, break bread, get to know each other, get to see how within the body we can help each other, be effective. Because there are certain gifts that I have. There are certain gifts that you have. There are certain things that you can help me out with. There are certain things that I can help you out with. But we're not going to do that if we're not together. We will not accomplish the things that matter to God. If first we don't come together. So we love God, right? And God is inviting us to make decisions, to take action. And I say this because I can tell my wife all day, I love you, baby. I can tell my wife all day, I love you, baby. But guess what? <laughs> Picking up my shoes from the, from, the, from the entrance of the door can show her that I love her and that I care for her more than just saying, I love you, baby. The Bible even says in, in, in a verse, with their lips, they honor me, but their heart is away from me. And I'm translating from Spanish. You know, I read the Bible in Spanish. I started to read it in English so I could get better in, in memorizing it in English and being able to say it in English. But it, it, the translation is some, somewhat like that. With their lips, they honor me, but their heart is far away. How are we showing God that what matters to Him matters to us? If we're not taking the steps necessary, if we're not taking action, if we're not deciding to go the route and put ourselves in situation that open the opportunity for us to love on each other. Love God. Follow God's rule. Love others. This unity means a oneness, right? Of mind and heart. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean sameness. We should strive for unity. But we need to understand that we all have diverse gifts and abilities. And we have to be humble enough to consider these things. And if I have a weakness and I know a brother or sister that that weakness that I have is their strength and I come together with them, believe me, I could grow in the things that I am weak by joining with my brother and my sister. Miles Monroe, PJ sent me something a while back about Miles Monroe. It was, it was a sermon. And the sermon spoke about how the, the church has created rhythms so that people can go to church and be saved, right? But it's not creating environments or, or, or it's not educating, developing the church in order to, to push and move the kingdom of God here and now. God's kingdom is a present reality. And it's also a future hope. We are able to show the world God's kingdom here on earth. Because at the end of the day, it's mind-blowing. In today's time, the way that people just have so many different opinions so many different definitions, so many truth to find a group of people, a community that says Christ is the truth. And not only say Christ is the truth, but being able to love on each other. That people could see that we're actually one. When that happens, people will start falling on the feet of Christ 
like never before. I truly believe that miracles will occur like we never seen before. Because it's not going to be a matter of anybody being the protagonist. It's a matter of Christ being the protagonist. Christ being upheld high by its church. How it's supposed to be. He is the head. We are the body. We come together. But we need to submit to the body. We need to submit to what matters to him. And it's not easy. I'm not standing here telling you it's easy. I'm here telling you that through community, through the word, through being obedient to the, to the things that matters to him, we will see and come to learn that we also love what he loves. Because when we start to see the fruits, the harvest, we will realize that we had a distorted definition of success, that we had a distorted definition of even what the church should look like. Christ is inviting us to see what matters to him. He will provide. He will take care of us. I think we could all agree on the statement that the thing, one of the major things that matters to God is people. That is one of the major things that matters to God is people. How are we loving on people? How are we showing this selfish love that he showed us? C.S. Lewis says this, in mere Christianity suggests that love is not merely an emotion but a deliberate choice to act in the best interest of others. And it sounds beautiful, but I know it's a hard pill to swallow because the culture and everything around us has told us that we need to take care of ourselves and we need to take care of our own. And God continuously is saying, just trust me. I got you. Worry about the things that, that I'm worried about. And everything else he will cover. Because we are more valuable than birds. And I'm going to end with this. Because I know it's Sabbath Sunday. And I really want you guys to get into some discussion questions. In Ephesians, Ephesians 4, Paul says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Let's align what matters to us with what matters to God. Lord, give us the strength, the boldness, the courage to love the way you love, to go ahead, Father, and just Believe with no doubt. Be convinced like the apostles that you are true, that your word will never pass, 
that everything else in this world will pass. And that that's what we need to focus on. And have an eternal perspective so that we could walk according to the way that you want us to walk. So that we could be your church, we could be your hands and your feet. So that we could see the needs, Father God, of other people around us. And we could be moved by your spirit and supply those needs. Father, that we could be the church, that we could be united, that we could love one another like, like the world hasn't seen before. You say in your word that when that happens, they will believe that God sent you. Father, help us be part of that community, be part of your church to push your agenda, to push your love. Lord, help us not to fall into the patterns of this world and renew our understanding so that we could be transformed, so that we could be different. And I pray, Father God, for all those people that have said yes to Sabbath Sunday, for all those people that are sitting in, in those living rooms right now, Lord. I pray for them, Lord, so that they could continue, Lord, to break bread and their lives to be transformed through the testimonies and the things that are happening in those houses. Lord, and I also pray for those that are at home, from church online. May they take this message. May they see the heart behind it. And that we could be the church, that bride, that you will come back for. So I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.